Hi, I'm Dani Korpela and I will present our work Epic Trace, predicting TCR binding to unseen epitopes using attention and contextualized embeddings. T cells are a part of the adaptive immune system and they fight pathogens and cancer, but they may also cause autoimmune diseases. For an immune response, the T cell receptors must bind to peptide MHC complexes. But there is a vast diversity of TCRs and also a vast amount of different PMHCs. Because of this vast amount of combinations, an experimental approach to determine these bindings is not feasible. And thus, a reliable prediction of the TCR PMHC binding would be valuable. We collect, collected our data from VDJDB and IEDB. This data is skewed, having far more TCRs than epitopes. Also, a majority of all TCRs belong to a few most frequent epitopes, as can be seen from the figure. Models using epitope as a class label or binary classifiers for a specific epitope can only be trained on the most frequent epitopes. More general classifiers using the amino acid sequence of the epitope can predict also for unseen epitopes. But this task is very hard. This is because the data covers only a small portion of the epitope space. We focus on this task where both the TCRs and the epitopes are unseen. That is, they are outside of the training data. And compare this task to a setting where the epitope is seen. Our model uses all available information and we use the protbert to contextualize the amino acid sequences. That is the CDR three regions of both alpha and beta chains and the epitope. The V and J and MHC gene information is inputted as one hot vectors to the model. Our architecture uses convolution and multi-head self-attention to make the prediction. One of the three output heads is used depending on the availability of the TCR chains for the given data point. This means that the model benefits from a data point even if only either chain is available. We compared our model against other models using the epitope as a amino acid sequence. This was done in a 10-fold cross-validation setting. We calculated the mean of the average precision and the AUROC. As can be seen from the table, our model outperforms EPTCR, Titan and IMREX and performs also better than ERGO2. We conducted also an input feature ablation study to see how the inputs affect the two tasks. From the table, we can see that the MHC information is very important in the unseen epitope case, but not that important in the seen epitope case. Whereas we can see that the V and J information is important for both tasks. We also studied the effect of including or excluding epitopes that had only less than 15 associated TCRs, changing the amount of unique epitopes in the training data. These epitopes are also paired with many unique MHCs Thus, we repeated the experiments without the MHC information. As we can see from the plot, 
the less frequent epitopes did improve the prediction, even if the MHC information was not used. In the last experiment, we took 81 positive data points from a yeast display study and generated negatives known to bind the same MHC. This means that the generated negatives are hard to distinguish from the positives. Thus, we aided the model by adding 10% of the data to the train set. With this addition, we achieved a reasonable performance to screen for similar epitopes. From the plot, we can see the recall and the number of positives chosen as a function of the number of highest prediction values in the test set. In this way, we can show how well the new epitopes can be screened. As a conclusion, the unseen epitope task remains a very hard task for the current models. Improved TCR PMHC sequencing methods and increased availability of data, especially unique epitopes, will improve the predictive performance. Thank you.